Even though the new Mac Mini has a new form factor, a new processor, and a new baseline of 16 gigs of RAM, Apple has still left us with 256 gigs for the internal boot drive on the base model. But in my previous M4 Mac Mini video, we briefly spoke about getting around this limitation of the base model by using other forms of storage without having to pay for egregious storage upgrades directly from Apple. So why do we even need to do this in the first place? On the base model M4 Mac Mini, you get the M4 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, everything in the box is all included for $600. Or you could buy just this one two terabyte storage upgrade for $800 hundred US dollars. That is more than the whole base computer. And that's just a little crazy. But luckily, we could solve this problem ourselves for much less money. Because today, we're installing a two terabyte NVMe drive inside of a Thunderbolt 4 enclosure. And we're going to see what kind of speeds we can get out of it. I was able to score this crucial P3 plus two terabyte model on Amazon for just over $100. And this Wavelink Thunderbolt 4 enclosure was just about $55. So the two terabyte NVMe drive and the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure together were still under 200 US dollars. Which if you took that 200 US dollars and put it towards an M4 Mac, many internal storage upgrade, you'd only be looking at bumping up to 512 gigabytes. That's pretty depressing. But considering the two terabyte internal storage upgrade is $800, I'd say $200 seems like a deal in comparison. The installation is a very simple procedure. All we have to do is pop the cover off the enclosure, stick these thermal pads to each side of the SSD, pop the SSD in the enclosure, tighten it down with this little rubber screw thing, pop the enclosure back together, and then plug it into the Mac. But this is a blank drive that we just got in the mail, so we're going to have to format it before we can use it. But this is easily done with macOS disk utility. Just whack the command key and spacebar to to bring up Spotlight, which is my favorite macOS keyboard shortcut, and type Disk Utility. Even though this looks a little confusing, all we need to do in here is select the empty drive we just plugged in and format it so that we can actually use it. So if you're only using this drive with Mac, you can format it with APFS pretty easily, but if you're also planning on unplugging the drive and then plugging it into a Windows system from time to time, you're going to want to use XFAT since it's compatible with both macOS and Windows. Click Format, and we're done. Now it's time to test it out. For this test, we'll use Blackmagic Design's Drive Tester app. Just for comparison, this is an old spinning disk external hard drive. So yeah, if you're updating from an older style external drive, you're definitely gonna see a speed boost here. So the reality is Apple aren't really effective at communicating to their customers why their internal storage upgrades are so expensive. It is super fast internal storage, but most people just don't need that kind of capacity on their boot drive, especially since macOS Sequoia now allows you to install larger applications on your external drives. Apple is kind of counting on those high prices of their storage upgrades to communicate to their average customers that these storage upgrades are not really for you. You're better off finding storage somewhere else, either on an external drive a network attached storage device like a Synology NAS, or even cloud storage. Of course, Apple would prefer it if you paid for iCloud specifically, but any other cloud service works for this example as well. So while prosumers and professionals know exactly how much fast internal storage they need on their boot drive, average consumers might not, and they count on those high pricing factors to dissuade them from upgrading for no reason. But even if you're not a power user, if you just want the most internal storage and you're willing to pay for it, Apple is not gonna say no from taking your money. So what ends up happening is Apple just kind of doesn't say anything. They leave the prices for these storage upgrades really high and they count on the consumer's wallets informing them of how much fast internal storage they need. If you don't know how much fast internal storage you need, you probably won't waste the money. But if you do know exactly how much fast internal storage you need, then you probably know exactly how much it costs. But what Mac buyers really need to know is that having all that expensive storage available directly on the boot drive probably isn't really necessary for most people and probably not recommended for most people. And Apple is really counting on consumers to be told by the price to reconsider if they really want that much super fast storage inside their device, or they might be better off with other options such as external drives, network attached storage like a Synology NAS, or even cloud storage from Apple themselves or otherwise. You really just need to understand your own workflow and which speeds you need for which things. So yeah, while I would prefer Apple just give us a bigger boot drive in the base model Mac Mini anyways, it's also not that hard to go out and find other storage options that are not only cheaper, but also work better for you. 